My story is super messy. Obviously didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Hedy Yang. I'm a ceramics artist. Uh, my name is Mike Han, and I'm a Korean Detroit artist. My name is Jonathan Kung, and I am a chef in Detroit. Currently, I am self-employed. I am running a ceramics business out of my studio at home. I've been inspired by graffiti um, from, from since I was a, a really young kid. Food has done a really good job in showing me how connected people are, whether they know it or not. Is ceramics art or is it craft? Is it kitschy farmer's market souvenirs? Or is it, you know, something that tells like a deeper story? And to me, I haven't always, I, I don't care so much about the story. It's for me, I'm very technically driven, and so it's very much about technique, about attention to detail, quality, that sort of thing. Asian calligraphy, you know, is where a lot of my technique, I guess, is inspired by, where it's um, like a single brush stroke. In informing, like, uh, writing characters and things like that, you don't retrace your lines, right? You, you make one stroke, and I guess people who master calligraphy, right, you can, you can feel emotion, you can see um, different strength in writing uh, based on, on how confidently, you know, strokes are made and, and the balance of the characters on the page and you don't have an eraser, right? You don't have, you have one chance to create your work. I started a food blog and, and like I just, I think law just kind of fell out as I realized that this food thing that I was doing, I feel like had more potential for happiness. There's something just about making dumplings that is soothing, that is just kind of meditative, and then the process of making the broth and the sauce and stuff. And I don't think anyone is unhappy to have dumplings served to them. I make a mixture of functional and decorative stuff. I think it's really important to have a lot of handcrafted, really sentimental pieces that I use every day. So I make a lot of mugs. Um, as far as decorative stuff, it is drawn a lot from nature and just experiences that I've had and I currently am working on a line of cloud and sunset themed vases, um, all, mostly decorative stuff and I just paint clouds from very specific photos that I take of like a I went out to dinner and this was a really, really beautiful memory that I wanted to remember and I took a photo of the, the clouds at that time and just wanted to preserve it in, in a vase. We don't realize how connected we are. And so that's what these paintings ultimately are about, is that um, it's, it's one complete thing, it's all connected, but it's composed of all different individuals, um, all shapes and sizes, you know. Um, and uh, the more you read the work, the more you learn about the work, um, hopefully those, those ideas about the individual and how, how the individual participates in the whole, um, in the community, in the group, um, hopefully that becomes more apparent over time. I went from operating this private kitchen pop-up thing, trying to keep away from the public eye for as long and as much as I possibly could, and you know, I had been approached by some local media news outlets, anything from like Metro Times, Free Press, and Detroit News, and saying like I'm I'm not interested in talking about what I did. People enough people know around here about what I do, and that's good enough for me. But then all of a sudden you get a couple of videos go viral, and now everybody knows what you do, and now it's part of your business model that everybody knows what you do. Like it's been a huge learning curve for me to just go from like literally hiding in Detroit to like this is what I've been doing in the city for the past 10 years. Growing up, I went to a Chinese church. All my friends, my really close family friends were Chinese. My parents' friends were all Chinese. I think in, in college I, I became super aware that most of my friends were Chinese, most of my community was Asian, um, and so I felt like I had to kind of whitewash myself a little bit and hang out with people that weren't Chinese, and now that I live in Detroit and there isn't as much of an Asian community, I do feel like, I do miss it a lot. In Detroit, we have no Koreans, you know, we have no Asian, I think it's like 1% of the city's population is 
all Asian population is one percent. Um, there's a desire to build community here in the city versus having to go to you know South Builder Troy or Ann Arbor um, in order to participate in anything that's Korean. How I represent myself as AAPI on TikTok and by and large like social media in general, I feel like it's one of those things where depending on what you do, your very existence can be the movement, your very existence can be the protest. For me, like I'm very, even though I'm not, <laughs> to some people I would be considered hardly Chinese. Um, and then to others, I would be considered like very Chinese. And I can only, I can only just live the way I do and work the way that I know how to work with the ingredients that I know how to work with. It wasn't until, you know, this past year that you start to see, you know, Grey's Anatomy is tackling hate against racism against Asians and like Asian doctors and how patients don't want to be seen by them or touched in case they get coronavirus and things like that. It was very kind of like shocking to, to actually see it played out like that on, on, a, on a screen and realize like, oh, this is, it's very, very real and serious and is coming more to light than it was in the past. In terms of like how, how to create awareness and, and how to create change, um, I think awareness is really important and I'm, I'm really hopeful and excited when I, you know, get to see, you know, you know white people and black people becoming allies and, and, and really standing up for Asians and um, more larger populations, you know, um, uh, taking it upon themselves to educate themselves and um, so I'm very encouraged by those kinds of things. Um, but I know that's not everybody. And so that's where in participating in some of these things where I'm, I'm hoping that there's maybe another, um, another way of doing things too. It's that yes, speaking up and being loud and like having a voice, like there's, there's, we definitely need to create some space there. But I think we also need to do things to help people uh, learn about our culture in a non-confrontational way. If we want people to treat us better, I think we have to go above and beyond, beyond and, and be kind to them and help educate them and share with them their stories about our culture and help explain things to them, even though we don't want to, even though we shouldn't have to, um, even though it's hard, that burden is on us. If, if we want to be treated fairly um, and, and, and for people to understand us, then we have to help the people who don't understand us and the people who hate us and the people who don't like us. We have to help turn them around by our actions, by uh, reaching out to them, doing all the things that we're not supposed, like we shouldn't have to do, um, but we have to if, if we really want the result that we want, I think.